All right, hello, math fans. All right, this is the first video uh, for Math 408. Uh, it's advanced uh, trig free calc. Anyway, this is chapter one, day one in our trig book. All right, so we're going to start with, and again, this is day one. Uh, we're going to start with the distance formula. Okay, you guys probably learned the distance formula in algebra one and used in geometry, and you learned it in algebra two. Um, but we're going to review it again because actually it's a pretty important formula that we're going to use uh, pretty often here. All right. So let's start out. It's uh, D equals, and basically it's the distance between two points, right? So let's actually even write these two points out. Um, X1 comma Y1 and X2 comma Y2. So the distance is square root of X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus y1 squared. Okay? Actually comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? It's just that's basically what that is. That's like the distance d is c. It's the hypotenuse or the distance between these points and it's basically the um, the legs squared added together and then the square root. That's where it comes from. Now, people always have a difficult time remembering things. And I'll tell you the way I teach a lot of these classes, I teach them with a lot of examples and I teach it with different ways to remember things. But a lot of people are, uh, get confused sometimes and they're like, how to remember that? And sometimes they get confused between, you know, where is it up uh, x2 plus x1 minus y2 plus y1 or is it minus and everything? So I always call the distance formula, it's a SASE formula. Okay, SASE formula stands for subtract, add, subtract. Subtract, add, subtract. All right, that's just a little way to remember that. So it's a sassy formula. All right, so let's try it um, on a nice little friendly example here. Um, negative 3 comma 2 root 5 and negative 2 comma negative 3 root 5. Now I'll tell you, when you're doing the problem, math fans, what I'd like you guys to do is um, do this first. So subtract add, subtract. Put the negatives in already because then when you put in the negative numbers you don't get confused and you don't kind of mess things up. So use that as a nice little uh, skeleton and write it in there. Okay, so it's going to do x2 minus x1. So negative 2 and negative 3. And it doesn't, doesn't matter which one's x2 and which one's x1 as long as you're um, as, you, as long as you're consistent about it. That doesn't even matter either but you have to obviously put the x's together and you have to put the y's together. Okay, and then y2. So negative 3 root 5 minus 2 root 5. So you got d equals, uh, it's plus, right? And so that gives you 1 squared uh, plus uh, negative 5 root 5 squared. All right, so d equals the square root of 1 and 5 root 5, the same thing as negative 5 root 5 or 5 root 5 squared, right? But remember, it's 5 squared, which is 25, times root 5 squared, which is 5. So 25 times 5 is 125. So it's plus 125, which is the square root of 126. And, of course, you use your calculator. Uh, and, you know, um, 9 goes into that evenly. So it's actually 3 root 14. And, guys, I always want to simplify. If you don't simplify it completely, you're going to lose a point for not doing that. All right? Okay, so let's use the distance formula here. using the distance formula. All right, so you have x comma 7 and 2 comma 3, and I'm going to tell you my distance is equal to 5. Find x. All right, now a very clever way to do this is to say, oh, look it, I've identified it. There it is. So there it is, okay? But that's really not going to get you any points. I'll maybe get a little chuckle out of it, but uh, mark it wrong. So what you're going to do is you're given everything here, so we're just going to say 5 distance equals the square root of, and let's put our, right, it's, it's sassy, subtract, add, subtract. And uh, and again, it doesn't matter if it's x2 minus x1 or x1 minus, minus x2, it doesn't matter. So we're going to just do, put the x and the 2 here, 
and put the 7 and the 3 here. All right, so I get uh, 5 equals the square root of x minus 2 squared plus 4 squared, or 16. Then how do you solve from here? Well, you got to get rid of that square root, so we're going to square both sides. So 25 is equal to x minus 2 squared plus 16. Subtract 16 from both sides, and I get 9, and then you take the square root of both sides, and you get x minus 2 equals plus or minus 3. Don't forget the plus or minus, math fans. That's important. And so x equals 2 plus or minus 3. Can't leave in that form. So 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And those are your two answers. All right. That's not too bad. And really, think about it. When you, the reason you get two answers, I'm not going to necessarily draw this picture here. Um, well, we can here. 1, 2... 1, 2, comma, 3. So that's the point that's given. And x, comma, 7. So something, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So can't it either be here? You know, looking for the distance, right? It could be here or here. Or let's, you know, if this in this case here, the distance was 5. Or, sorry, x uh, was 5 and negative 1. And here it is. x is negative 1 here. And x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that distance is the same. That makes sense why you have two answers for that problem. Okay? All right, so let's talk about, let's go back into geometry a little bit. Let's talk about special right triangles. Okay, and you guys remember 3, 4, 5, and 5, 12, 13. And you know all those, and, and basically there's a lot of them out there, but how do you know if it's a right triangle? So how do you know it's a right triangle? Okay, well, of course, the Pythagorean theorem. And you know that is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And these are all called Pythagorean uh, triples. Okay? And remember, this is just the main thing here, right? The C is always the longest side. So it would be uh, 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared, right? Always the longest side is uh, C. All right, that's pretty mellow. All right, so let's, uh, one more topic I want to cover today is interval notation. And you guys will use this a lot in trig, and we're also going to use this in pre-calc, and we're going to cover a little bit of calculus in this class too, so you guys need to understand interval notation. Uh, let's just draw a quick picture here. So one, two, three, four, and let's do a close dot here and open dot here. Okay, and you guys know already if I do um, compound inequality, right, this is going to be x is between 2 and 4. Notice this is um, a less than or equal to, and this one is just a less than sign. Okay, very important. So this is the deal. If it's a equal to, it's a bracket. So bracket. If it's a just less than sign, it's a parenthesis. Okay? So that's what interval notation is. So the way I'd write that in interval notation is 2, comma, 4. It's between 2, comma, 4. That's including 2 and not including 4. Okay? It's pretty easy, right? Um, if I give you x is greater than negative 2, how do you represent that? It's between negative 2 and infinity. Now, what is infinity? Is infinity a bracket or is it a parenthesis? Actually, it's a parenthesis because um, a bracket means you're there. Infinity is technically not a number. All right? So you, can, uh, you really can't be at infinity. Infinity, you approach infinity. It's never a number. So uh, that's why it's going to be a parenthesis. Okay? And then let's try another one here. X is less than or equal to 5. Um, now, that's going to be negative infinity to 5 in bracket. 
Okay, so remember, infinity or negative infinity can only be a parenthesis, never a bracket, because you can never be there. All right, so that's interval notation. Um, and uh, that's it. So tomorrow we'll uh, start with some uh, good geometry review, and, uh, and that's it. Have a good day, math fans. Adios. Goodbye.